Crystal, what did you even do research in? You are a creative writing major. To which I would respond, linguistics. Hey guys, it's Crystal back at it again with another video. If you don't know me, I'm a Columbia University student who makes videos on all things college, how to succeed in high school, and my life at Columbia. Obviously I'm online right now, but hopefully I'll be going back next year and you guys will be able to see all the possible vlogs on campus. Before I get into it, be sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time I post. And yeah, let's get started. So you might be asking, Crystal, what did you even do research in? You are a creative writing major. To which I would respond, linguistics. Obviously, it was linguistics. I mean, I love words. I love writing. I love languages. And so I did research in Spanish sociolinguistics, and it was with my professor at the time, who was my teacher in Spanish for five years at my high school, which was the Stanford University Online High School. And she had been teaching me for a while now. As you can tell, five years is a long time, and we had developed a really great relationship. So we ended up doing this research project together. She was teaching several different sections online, as you guys know, Stanford University Online High School, of course, it was an online school. So I was in her Spanish 5 class, which was one level up from AP Spanish. So I really enjoyed taking classes with her. I really enjoyed learning Spanish. And it was a class with a sociolinguistics focus. And we all had to do some kind of research project. And she asked me to help her with analyzing different research that she was trying to do. It was looking at the grammatical functions of her Spanish 3 students. So we had Spanish 1 all the way up through Spanish 5, which was the highest level. And she had me look at the students who were in the intermediate range. And we looked at whether they were still making the same grammatical mistakes on a statistically significant level in the second semester as I have been in the first semester from fall to spring. And honestly, if COVID-19 hadn't been a thing, we would have gone right ahead and presented our research at linguistics conferences. So hopefully that's still something in the future to look forward to. And she was also a college professor in the past and now actually works with me. I have a video with my professor on this channel, so you should totally go check it out. We give a lot of tips on how to navigate online learning since, of course, we were at an online school together. I think it's super helpful. You guys should totally go take a look. And then ever since, through that tutoring and academic consulting company I was telling you guys about, I've been helping my students have the opportunity to work with college professors, even as high school students themselves too. So we've been able to help them get positions no matter how esoteric or unknown the field is. Like, I've helped my students get internships in dance anthropology. I didn't even know that was a thing until one of my subscribers reached out to me and wanted to start working with me. And then she ended up being accepted to Stanford after working with me on her applications. And she'll be going there next year, which is so, so exciting. So we're super proud of her. I helped her with drafting her cold emails to professors and making sure that she could really put her best foot forward. So that's what I'm going to be talking about now, how to get high school internships with college professors. So there are two main ways you can go about doing this. So first and foremost, you can go through a formalized program. Right now, I would say the two best online research programs for high school students are the ones that have been solidly online since before the pandemic, since they really know what they're doing and they'll give you the best experience. And sometimes you can even get college credit. So first and foremost, there's Pioneer Academics, which is a research program where you work one-on-one -on -one with a professor in pretty much any field of your choosing. And that's the one that gives you college credit that you can put towards going to whichever college you end up at. I've helped some of my students get into that and they've done research in history, like especially the humanities, that's been a big one, but they also support STEM research as well, which is wonderful. They're an equal opportunity research program. Now, the thing to know about this is that they do have an interview process and it's pretty specific. Like for instance, not only do you have to talk about your research interests and what kinds of professors you want to work with and why you want to do this in the first place, but you also have to do certain tasks. Like they'll send you a prompt to write an essay about, and then you have to write an essay in a short period of time, something like 15 to 20 minutes while you're on the interview call and then you send it back to them. So I would recommend working on your fast writing skills and trying out different practice prompts. If you email me, I can give you practice prompts to work with and prepare you for these kinds of interviews. I do that stuff with my students all the time, so don't hesitate to get in touch. And then the other really great online program is called Horizon Academic Research Program. And that does not give college credit, but it's a little bit more flexible than Pioneer because not only can you work one-on-one -on -one with a professor, although you can definitely do that, you can also work 
two on one, three on one, four on one, you can do small groups. They also have classes where you learn how to do research and you're still doing the research, but it's a little bit more instructive. So I would recommend things like the classes for the earlier grades of high school, like ninth and 10th graders, because that's super helpful in terms of gaining research skills and learning how to do it in the first place. And then when you're in 11th or 12th grade, or depending on how precocious you are, honestly, dive right in, you can definitely go for the one-on-one -on -one experience and do your own research that is guided by your professor, but you're not necessarily in that class kind of environment. You're really driving it. They have certain areas that they really specialize in more than others, but they're also open to you sending them a proposal for an area of interest that's outside those specific disciplines. So you should totally still go ahead and apply. And I have had my students get into both of these before I have helped them out with both the application and interview process. So once again, do not hesitate to email me if you have any questions about these kinds of formalized research programs, which are completely online and you can do during COVID-19. They both have summer sessions and spring sessions, and for Horizon, they have programs like all throughout the year, fall, winter. So if you're looking for a summer internship, this is definitely a good way to go. Then the number two way of getting an internship is also super popular. I'm just putting it as number two because something had to go there. It's last but certainly not least. And that is cold emailing professors. Now, that sounds really scary. Like cold emailing professors, oh my God, no way. That's like disrespectful and I'll get shut down immediately. No, to both of those things. It's not and you won't. Professors either won't respond if they're not interested in what kinds of services you have to offer and what you can help them out with, or they'll absolutely be in need of help for their next research project and they'll jump on the chance to have someone to help them with not only clerical work, but also things like graphing, conducting interviews, and sometimes even working on the papers for their next upcoming book on their research. I've had students do all of those things. So when you're looking to cold email professors, you have to start thinking about what kind of internship you want. Do you want it to be more administrative? Like, do you want to kind of run virtual online errands for your professor? Or do you want to really be involved in the nitty gritty work of interviewing and tagging and coding interviews and then hopefully writing up some research papers as well, maybe even getting your name listed as an author on a publication. And it depends on where you're at and the amount of knowledge that you have in your passion. So you'll show that through attaching your resume. You can let the professor know in your cold email that you're attaching your resume. And the way that you find professors in the first place is go to the different faculty pages of universities either near you or honestly, because we're online, it can literally be across the nation. It doesn't even matter. And look at who is doing research right now in the area that you're interested in. If you're interested in psychological research, go to the psychology department and look at the name. They'll usually give you brief bios. Sometimes they even work in labs or that sort of thing. Or it'll tell you what publication they're working on right now or what book or paper is consuming their time. And then they almost always have their email addresses and professors are really easy to get a hold of. So go ahead and write that cold email. And email me if you need help putting together the cold email because it's really important to be respectful but straightforward. And I really think it's a necessity. Like it is not optional to have someone look over your cold email before you reach out because that's how you're going to get a response. You don't need to be 100% experienced in the field. You don't need to be some kind of child genius to get an internship, but you do need to be really careful about your wording. So yeah, reach out to me. I would be more than happy to help you out. At this point, I've built up literal templates that I have my students use to make sure that they are able to maximize their chances of actually getting a response. And you do want to make sure that on your resume, you show any relevant experience at all, any prior interest in the field, even if it's something like taking a class in it. I mean, you're a high school student, so that kind of thing is completely relevant. So you want to put your relevant coursework, any nonprofit work that you've done in it. I've had a lot of students do nonprofit work in an area and then go on to get an internship in that area. Any actual work experience, like paid work experience, that you've had, any academic work outside of schools, like clubs, anything that you've done. And if you've embarked on any research on your own, I mean, hey, kudos to you. Definitely put that on there. That deserves to be seen. And that's how you're going to let the professor know that you have this deep-rooted interest in the subject. Don't try and go for an internship in something you don't care about. That will be very clear. It will read off the page. Go with something that you're passionate about and that you actually want to get more experience in. And go in with an open mind. Be ready to learn. So those are my tips for doing research in high school with a college professor. It is not impossible. I know it's always like the gold standard of what every student wants to do. And so it sounds like it must be really far-fetched and hard, but it's not. The only thing you need to do is quantity. Apply to lots of programs, email lots of professors, or 
get in touch with me and I can help you maximize your opportunity of getting in from day one. So either way, good luck, you guys. You got this. Let me know in the comments down below what area you would want to research in. And I will see you all tomorrow since, once again, I'm uploading every day. So please vote for me in the FedEx Small Business Grant Competition. It would truly change not only my life, but this business and the lives of the students I'm helping because I want to put any money that I would win towards helping give my students scholarships so I can work with them and really extend my business to as many people as possible. And if this video was helpful and informative to you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you guys really soon. Bye!